I started out actually doing a, an undergraduate degree in Cambridge called Natural Sciences, which was quite an unusual degree in that it covered the whole of the sciences. So I'd gone in intending to study physics, but actually found biology more interesting because it was new and ended up specialising in genetics. So really genetics was my first degree. I'd always been fascinated by science as a child and I, as a hobby, uh, tried building computers, tinkered with electronics, not very successfully generally, um, and also uh, really enjoyed mathematics and so it was natural for me to go into a science degree. The appeal of basic research for me is the, the freedom to pursue uh, open questions, questions that no one has solved as yet, and pursue them in unexpected directions and then to get the surprise and satisfaction of usually unexpected answers. I started out my research uh, studying hybrid zones which are narrow regions where distinct populations come together and produce hybrids and yet remain separate and distinct and I studied in fact um, initially two different types of grasshopper in the French Alps, did a lot of field work, still do quite a lot of field work um, but this field research generalised into um, mathematical modelling of systems which are distributed over space and which involve interactions amongst many genes. So on the more basic research side, um, I think I've generally been very pleased to go from understanding a specific system, a hybrid zone in, in the grasshoppers for example, um, through to generalising that to understand much broader questions and one of the questions I've worked on has been to try and understand why so many organisms have sexual reproduction, why they go to the trouble of finding a mate and mixing their genes with their mate, producing a, a recombinant offspring. And this has been a sort of major puzzle and I think we've made a lot of theoretical progress over the years with it, but partly coming from um, taking techniques from different fields. Um, on the more practical side, something that I've isn't a major part of, of my research, but I'm, I've been involved with recently, is a programme to control dengue fever. Um, and this has now been successful in Northern Australia. Uh, the idea is that you can infect mosquitoes, which transmit dengue, uh, you can infect them with a bacterium called Wolbachia, which surprisingly makes those mosquitoes resistant to transmitting the disease. And they've now been released in Cairns in Northern Australia and, and really seem to have stopped the transmission. So um, my contribution to this has been to see that the mathematical models of hybrid zones, which I've worked on for a long time, uh, apply directly to the spread of the Wolbachia infection. And so one can use them to optimise the control programme, to decide how many mosquitoes you need to release and where to release them most efficiently. I joined IST Austria in 2008, a year before it opened. This whole campus was a building site and I had an office overlooking the rubble, really. Um, I came because I was looking for a job in, in Europe and there are not so many places that are good in evolutionary biology. Uh, Vienna is one of two or three real concentrations um, and IST opened up at just the right time. I think its emphasis on basic research and its coverage of the whole of the sciences. So although I've been in a university all my career, I tended to stay within a department and that was fun, but very restricted in a way. And here at IST, we have the opportunity, and indeed it's necessary to talk to people in a whole range of different disciplines, which is very stimulating. So in 10 years time, IST Austria will be about twice as big, we think. Um, it will be, you know, larger in the sense of two or three more buildings perhaps, but I hope that it'll retain its current openness and its current cross-disciplinary atmosphere.